What if the oldest Europeans weren't who we thought? For years, we traced our ancestry through the farmers who crossed from the east, or the warriors who thundered in from the steppes. Clean lines, predictable origins, but buried beneath the glacial silence of Western Europe, something older has been whispering. It begins in the caves, not with kings or conquerors, but with artists, hunters, ghosts, the Magdalenians. Seventeen thousand years ago, they moved like shadows across the frozen bones of Ice Age Europe, following the herds, carving reindeer onto ivory, lighting fire to the walls of Lasco and Altamira with visions no one alive had seen. They weren't farmers, they weren't builders, but their minds were fire, shaping bone harpoons, sketching out mammoths and ochre, dancing between extinction and survival. And then they were gone. For centuries, their story ended there, until science cracked open their tomb. Inside a skeleton from El Myron Cave in Spain, DNA told a tale no textbook had written. A distinct genetic cluster, neither farmer nor steppe, coded into every bone. The El Myron signal, a genetic ghost from the edge of the Ice Age, and it matched no one, not quite. It carried a strange ancestral signature, one that echoed a 35,000-year-old genome from Belgium, one that had survived glacial collapse, migration storms, and time itself. It had no place in the linear story of Europe, but it was real, and it wasn't alone. More skeletons surfaced from France, Belgium, Poland, different places, same ghost, same whisper from the past. They were Magdalenian, and they were supposed to be extinct. So what happened? What force wiped their blood from the map, yet let their bones endure? What if their legacy isn't buried at all, but hiding inside us, waiting to be recognized? This isn't just about ancient bones. It's about a genetic identity almost erased. They said the Ice Age erased everything, that when the glaciers surged, they didn't just bury forests and rivers, they buried bloodlines. Whole peoples. Gone. But one lineage didn't die. Not in the caves. Not in the cold. Not even after 35,000 years. In a crumbling chamber in Belgium's Goyet Caves, scientists pulled fragments of DNA from a skull older than the last glaciers. Goyet Q116-1. A human, modern, yes, but ancient beyond belief. His genes. Western. Deeply Western. Unlike anything still walking today. He should have vanished when the cold came. But thousands of years later, across a frozen continent, in the shadowed valleys of Iberia, his ghost reappeared. Same markers. Same ancestry. Hidden in the bones of Ice Age artists. Magdalenian reindeer hunters, women buried with ochre. Men carved into ivory memory. It was as if a thread, cut by cold, had somehow re itself in the dark. While Europe froze, a few held on. In the caves of what we now call France and northern Spain, firelight danced on stone walls. Children were born, ancestors remembered. The world outside was dying, but in here, blood survived. This wasn't migration. It was resistance, a genetic defiance of extinction. And when the ice began to retreat, these cave-born descendants didn't just walk out. They re-emerged, carving antlers into tools, vision into art, memory into DNA. But here's the twist. That thread, that goyed ancestry, it wasn't alone. Something else had entered the blood. A new signature. A foreign strand. Traced to distant mountains, other skies, warmer lands beyond the ice. A whisper in the genome. So the question isn't just who survived. It's who joined them. Because this ancient lineage, this survivor of the deep freeze, didn't remain untouched. So who were the other ancestors? That changed their DNA forever? There's something buried in their blood that doesn't belong. For decades, we called them Cro-Magnon, Ice Age Europeans, survivors of the glacial dark. But when scientists cracked open the genomes of Magdalenian bones, bones sealed beneath reindeer hides and ancient ochre, they found a whisper that wasn't Western at all. It came from the South, not the Iberian South. Farther, through the Balkans, across the peaks of the Apennines, from places touched by the sun, not the snow, a thread in the genome. 30% of it, that traced back to people the Magdalenians had never been thought to meet. The Villa Bruna Cluster, Southeastern, Post-Glacial, 
carrying genes tied to West Asia and a very different world, not hunters of mammoth, but trackers in forests, not reindeer artists, but mountain foragers with new rituals, new gods, new blood, and yet their legacy was now inside the Magdalenians. It didn't arrive with war. No bones show violence. It arrived quietly, through firelight, through breath, through love, through exogamy, mating beyond the tribe, and the DNA changed. Burials shifted. Women were laid down differently. Skull shapes varied. Skin began to lighten. Hair, maybe even eyes, too. Mitochondrial lineages, once narrow, suddenly bloomed. New maternal branches, new genetic melodies. The pure Ice Age lineage? It fractured. What emerged wasn't a holdover from the past. It was a bridge between cro and something new. Magdalenians were no longer just descendants of the Goya Caves. They were becoming something else. A fusion. A future. And in one case, the fusion was complete. In a cave in northern Spain, archaeologists uncovered the remains of a woman, buried in ochre, surrounded by stone tools, sealed beneath the dripstone hush of time. But her DNA? She wasn't like the others. Because within her, the Villa Brenna signal wasn't a whisper. It was a roar. And one woman, buried in a Spanish cave, had more of this ancestry than anyone. She was buried in blood-red earth alone, but not forgotten. High in the Cantabrian Mountains, deep inside Elmiron Cave, her bones lay untouched for nearly 19,000 years. A single woman, wrapped in ochre, cradled by stone. To some, she was just another Ice Age burial. But when her DNA was sequenced, something shattered. She wasn't just Magdalenian. She was something else. 43% of her ancestry came from far away, from the Villa Brenna lineage, that southern mystery winding its way through post-glacial Europe, more than anyone found before or since. She wasn't a blend. She was the merger. And yet, she was honored. The red powder wasn't random. It was ritual. Her body, carefully placed, marked with reverence. Was she a matriarch? A memory? A vessel? Whatever she was, they painted for her. Above her tomb, in flickering torchlight, animals raced across the stone, reindeer, bison, spirits of the hunt. The wall spoke of life, but her resting place whispered of change. Because in her blood, two continents met. One ancestor from the icy tundra of Goyet, another from warmer forests beyond the Alps. And in her, both thrived. She became a symbol. A boundary crossed. A door opened, and that door didn't close. From her, scientists would name a whole genetic cluster, Elmiron, a code for something older than history, yet somehow still present, still echoing in the strands of later Europeans. But here's what the bones don't tell you. She wasn't meant to stay here. Her people, they didn't stay here. Something was stirring, north of the Pyrenees, east of the Rhine. As the ice cracked and melted, they followed the rivers carried stories, carried blood, and with them, something ancient returned. The glaciers cracked first, not with violence, but with silence, a slow, melting breath that turned death into passage, and from the thaw they came, the Magdalenian reindeer hunters, children of the caves, born of fire and famine, moving north not with conquest, but with memory. They didn't build walls. They followed hooves, across valleys that hadn't seen a human footprint in 10,000 winters, from the ochre-stained chambers of Iberia to the forests of France to the far stone shelters of Poland, even across the sea, to the cliffs of Britain. No roads, no maps, but somehow one people. Same flint blades, same bone harpoons, same dreams etched into rock. They weren't just surviving. They were stitching Europe back together, step by step. Camp by camp, bone by bone, and their blood whispered of the same place. Every genome pulled from this migration told one story. Goy Q2, the old western route, the lineage that had refused extinction, now moved like a pulse through post-glacial Europe. A single tribe, scattered across a continent, still speaking through DNA. They left more than tools. They left a pattern, a signal, a unity in the wild. But unity isn't forever, because while they moved north, chasing the ghosts of reindeer, someone else was coming from the south. It didn't happen in a single battle. 
No flames, no swords, no conquest. Just trees. Where once there was open tundra, wind-carved and endless, now rose forests, thick, quiet, slow. And with them came a new kind of human. From the south, through Italy, the Balkans, maybe even Anatolia. They moved like the forest itself, patient, relentless, carrying a different rhythm, different prey, different blood. Villabrunna, that name, once a single skeleton, is now the face of a new wave. Western hunter-gatherers, genetically distinct, adapted to shade, not snow, and rising. Around 14,000 years ago, the data shifts. Like a tide turning, the old Magdalenian signatures, the El Myron cluster, the Goy Q2 thread, they begin to flicker, then fade, not in war, but in the quiet. As the trees spread, the reindeer fled, the open plains vanished, and with them, the people who had danced there, the carvers, the painters, the ones who remembered the caves. Magdalenian culture vanishes, the harpoons become arrows, the art stops, the tools forget their makers, burial customs drift into silence, and yet, something lingers. Because here's the paradox. You can erase a culture, but blood doesn't forget. Fragments survive, in unexpected places. Echoes of their DNA buried inside those who replaced them. Villa Brenna bodies, Magdalenian whispers. So what happens to a people when their world disappears? Do they vanish? Or do they dissolve, into memory, into lineage, into the bones of strangers? We thought they were gone. But in one land, their blood ran longer than anywhere else. Not all stories end in silence. When the Magdalenian world unraveled, when the art stopped, the tools shifted, the names were lost. There was one place that didn't let go. Iberia, a land of sharp cliffs and deep caves, where the Atlantic crashes like memory against stone. And in its northern corner, something strange endured. Basque country, modern, European, yet different. Their language, no known roots, no cousin tongues. It doesn't descend from Latin, Celtic, or any Indo-European line. It just exists, as if spoken in the Ice Age and never translated. Their genes, even stranger. Most Europeans carry fragments from waves of farmers and horsemen, from empires and migrations. But the Basques carry something else, a mitochondrial whisper, H1, H3. The same signatures found in Magdalenian women, buried in ochre, carved into bone. And it's not just maternal memory. Deep sequencing shows a dual ancestry, Goy Q2 and Villabrunna, a fusion frozen in time, while the rest of Europe changed, split, reformed. Iberia held the line. Why here? Maybe the mountains protected them. Maybe the coast sealed them in. Or maybe, some stories refused to be erased. Their rituals linger in shadow. Their myths echo through oral stories, passed between grandmothers. Even their isolation feels chosen, as if the blood itself remembers what it came from. But it isn't purity. It's persistence. A memory encoded into flesh. A thread from the caves of Elmiron, still pulsing in the veins of a living people. So we ask, could this land hold the last unbroken thread of Ice Age ancestry? In the genetic ruins of the Ice Age, we found a pattern, not a tool, not a carving, but a signature, etched into the bones of Magdalenian men. Why DNA haplogroup I? Every single male, from Spain to Germany, the same ancestral father, not found in earlier Europeans, not tied to Gravettians or Orignations. It arrives like a whisper from nowhere, and suddenly, it's everywhere among them as if some quiet brotherhood had emerged in the shadow of the glaciers, isolated, cohesive, bound not by tribe, but by blood, and on the maternal side, the story deepens. Mitochondrial haplogroups U5, U8, names that sound like codes, ghost lines, they're rare now, relics tucked into distant corners of the genome, but in the Magdalenian world, they were everywhere, mothers and sons, fathers and daughters, a loop of continuity, generation to generation, sealed by time. It doesn't make sense at first. These were exogamous people. They married out, traded partners across valleys and tribes. Their caves tell of wide networks, distant contacts. They should have been genetically mixed, but they weren't. 
Instead, something narrowed. A bottleneck. A collapse. Or maybe a choice. Did the Ice Age cage them into tiny pockets? Did only one lineage survive when others froze? Or did culture choose who stayed and who disappeared? Either way, what survived was singular, compressed, distilled, a narrow gene pool carrying the memory of an ancient Europe now lost. And here's where it turns, because DNA doesn't just track ancestry. It hints at who they were, and the same markers, those old lineages, trapped by snow and time. They carried traits rarely seen in Europe today. They weren't pale. They weren't blonde. They were something older. Even their skin told a story. Darker than you'd expect. They painted the walls of Europe's first cathedrals, before there were cities, before there were kings. But they didn't look like the faces in our textbooks. For centuries, we imagined them as towering, fair-skinned giants. Blue-eyed. Blonde-haired. Cold-weather royalty etched into our modern genes. But their bones tell a different story. When scientists decoded the phenotypic DNA of Magdalenian remains, the illusion cracked. What they found wasn't pale or northern. It was older, wilder, richer, dark skin, dark eyes, dark hair. A world imagined in charcoal and ochre, crafted not by icy titans, but by warm-toned artists, hunters, survivors. Underneath reindeer pelts, behind flint blades and bone harpoons, were faces we wouldn't recognize in a mirror. This wasn't a Europe of sameness. It was a mosaic, a living contradiction. Long before farmers came, long before the Indo-Europeans swept across the map with wagons and war, the Magdalenians weren't the future. They were the memory. And their pigments weren't just on cave walls. They were written in skin. But then the farmers arrived from the Near East, carrying lighter genes, new tools, new gods. And with them came a transformation. Skin lightened. Eyes brightened. The palette of the continent shifted. The ancient hues began to fade. And yet, somewhere, buried deep in the genome, those original tones still echo. Not lost. Just dimmed. Because DNA forgets nothing. So next time you see the walls of Lasco or Altamira, don't imagine them painted by people who look like us. Imagine them painted by people who shaped us. Because the final twist, they still live in our genes. You don't see them in the mirror, but they're there. In your blood, in the code beneath your skin. Faint but undeniable. The Magdalenians, a people long thought erased. Their tools buried. Their names never spoken. Their story unfinished. And yet, traces remain in tiny villages tucked into French valleys, in the cliffs of Cantabria, in the bone marrow of people who've never heard the name Elmiron, or Goyet, or Villabrina, some carry whispers of their DNA. Not much. A thread here, a flicker there. Ancient fragments in a sea of newer waves, farmers, herders, kings. But it's not the quantity that matters. It's the persistence. Because these aren't just genes. They're memories etched into the architecture of who we are. And science, for all its precision, still stumbles here. The post-Neolithic genome is noisy, mixed, messy. It's hard to trace a straight line through 10,000 years of chaos. But every so often a marker surfaces, a signature buried deep, a mitochondrial clue, a paternal echo. And when it does, it feels like contact, like someone from the Ice Age just tapped you on the shoulder. They left no cities, no scrolls, no spoken language we can hear. But their myths may still live in ours. Their visions in the way we draw, the way we bury, the way we remember. Because identity was never purity. It was always story. It was always survival. And if the Magdalenians still live anywhere, it's in the flicker of torchlight on painted stone, in the shape of a jawline, in the unknowable part of you that feels older than your name. So we ask the question, not just how much of them is still in you, but what other ancestors wait, buried in forgotten caves?